What's going on everybody? Welcome into another video. I'm Justin Voss. For those of you who are not familiar, I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube. And this video is actually an overview of this machine right here, which is the Everlast Power Arc 161 STH. And uh, it's a little small portable DC TIG and stick welding machine. They recommend it for, you know, obviously portable welding jobs, uh, small hobbyists or in your garage or small shop where space is limited. Um, motorsports fabrication, prototyping, things like that. This video is brought to you by Everlast. So this is kind of an overview, not really like a review critiquing, but we will probably do some of that as we get into it. I'm gonna share anything that comes up in my mind. Um, but I do think this is a great little under $500 as of right now US machine. And uh, it is a sponsored video, but the benefit of that is at the end, I'm going to give away some details on how one of you will end up with this exact welder. So that is a benefit of this video being brought to you by Everlast. Uh, I'm going to get this thing hooked up and then we'll start going over it. All the hookups on the front of this machine are 25 series DIN style connectors. So that's just something to keep in mind if you have stuff you are considering using with it or purchasing something alongside it, just so you know what you would need. These are the smaller connectors to go with this very compact machine. The 161 does not come standard with a foot pedal, but it does come standard with this switch mounted to the torch. So uh, you can operate it in two-step or four-step mode easily, but then you can also hook up a pedal that you can purchase separately, and we'll show that a little bit later. With the welder, you get the ground clamp, which I have hooked up right now, and then the torch assembly. It comes with the trigger zip tied to the torch already and a cover over the gas and the power line to the torch. Then there's a little consumable kit, some of which I've used, like the back cap is on the torch assembly. And then for you stick welders, it comes with this red stinger. All right, let's take a look at the controls. Like I said, I'm primarily focused on this as a TIG machine because that's what I do. But for stick, all your controls are over here on the left with the exception of your amperage dial right here, which works for either mode you're in. Uh, this is just a 6010 mode, which helps welding with that rod. Uh, VRD is voltage reduction device. It's kind of like a safety feature. And this is anti-stick, which helps it not stick down. Over here is the primary TIG controls. This is how you set it in two-step, four-step, or pedal mode. Two-step is when you take your trigger and you would push it down once to start the arc and hold it while you're welding and then release it when you're done welding. That's just simple on-off kind of switch. Four-step, which we're in right now, so this would be like you push it down, you have some starting amps, you release it, you're now at your full amperage, you can push it and hold it and step down to those amps again that are preset and then release it and it'll quit welding either immediately or it'll roll off depending on how you set, depending on the machine you're using too. Over here is high frequency start. That's kind of what I would have it in if I'm using any of these where I'm triggering it to start. Lift start is the standard lift start where you would touch it down to the workpiece and then lift it off to start the arc and then just pull it away a certain time until it cuts the arc off. Kind of awkward, I don't really like doing that, but if you do not have any kind of a trigger or pedal, or you just can't use one in the situation that you're in, that's what you would go with. It also keeps your setup really small. Live lift keeps the tungsten lit all the time. So you have to be careful not to touch it, I would imagine, but it also can sense when you're close to the ground, kind of like high frequency start, and actually start the arc without you actually having to touch the tungsten down and having some of the problems that you do sometimes on lift start. And then down here is your pulse setting on or off. Here in the middle is where you actually cycle between stick and TIG. Right now we are in TIG. This would put it in stick, back to TIG. Since we have pulse off, we're just gonna have our basic settings. Like right here, you're in amps. So this dial is adjusting the amps we're gonna weld at. When we're just in four step mode and pulse off, if we cycle up, it's gonna jump immediately to TIG preflow. This is how much gas will flow when you initially hit the pedal before it starts an arc. I usually have that at zero because I'll just trigger it and get the gas flowing manually. Next one is going to be downslope. That's how much time in seconds it takes to roll off the arc right at the end instead of hard cutting it off. 
And then post flow time is five seconds is what I have it set at right now, S is for seconds, of how much time the gas is gonna flow after you end the arc. And that's really just the four adjustments you have when you're not messing with any kind of pulse. Same thing if we put it over to pedal. TIG preflow, you do not have the downslope. You saw it skipped over that because you would kind of do your downslope manually with your pedal. So you just have the preflow and postflow. And that's it if you have it in pedal. If we turn the pulse on, you adjust the frequency of that by coming all the way down here into pulse hertz and you see the dial indicated and that's how you would adjust how often your pulse settings are. That's pretty much the only adjustment you have for the pulse on this machine. For some of these other ones, like your hot start and hot start time, that is a stick welding feature. So you can have your adjustment by going through there. It doesn't even give you those options on when you're set to TIG. So for those of you who stick weld, you probably know what those mean. The Power Arc 161 does come standard with a regulator in its package, which is nice. So for the gas lens and cup combination I'm gonna be using today, I'm gonna to set this one right around 20 CFH. This regulator, I had no problems with it, but the hose, I have to admit, the clamps on it, I've had a little bit of problems with. As you'll see right here, I have a hose clamp that I've added and removed the like crimp clamp that was on it because two different instances I had, one where it was leaking and another time where it completely blew off where I had let it sit throughout the day. Just something to keep in mind, this is a very well-priced machine and it comes with a regulator that you don't have to buy. So maybe just throw on some of your own hose clamps. Okay, I'm gonna start off in 2T, that's two-step. That's just where we're gonna push it down to start welding, let go, when we want to turn it off and it'll roll off at the set duration. I think I have it set around one second. Pretty simple. Okay, now if I switch it to 4T, that is going to put it at a very low amp when I push the trigger down, and then on release, it's gonna go up to our set predetermined, which is 120 right here. And then when you push the trigger back down, it's gonna go back to that very low, it's pretty much minimum amps for this machine. And then when I release again, it'll stop welding. Moving on into pedal only, this will be our max amperage now, and the pedal will determine all the way through that range from minimum amps all the way up to 120. To switch it out, you just unhook the connector for the finger switch and hook up your pedal if you have one. In my case, I have the Nova pedal. This is the pedal upgrade that I got with my 255 EXT. And if you order a machine from Everlast that comes standard with a foot pedal, you can use my promo code VOSS and you'll get this free upgrade to this foot pedal. But that's only on machines that come with a standard foot pedal. You can see on the display there, as I rolled onto the pedal, the amps raised up, and then you have a lot more adjustability that way with the whole range of a foot pedal. Now, the last big feature of the 161 is the pulse setting, like we mentioned before, and it just has a button that easily switches over to that. And then our adjustability for the frequency of the pulse is going to be right here, right at the end of this line. Right now, it's set to half a cycle every second. So if you want to up the frequency, this would be two full cycles a second. I don't mess with pulse a lot, but I know some people crank up the frequency and kind of more use it as a heat control method. And then others will turn it way down to a rate where they can actually add the rod as it's pulsing. So we're gonna try the latter one of those where we can add the rod on each pulse. So I'm gonna do 
uh, half a cycle each second. Now it is worth noting on the 161, in the pulse setting, the amperage control is the pulse amps or the max amps. Depending if you're using a finger switch or scratch to start or however you're starting it, or if you're using a pedal, you're setting that peak amperage. And the base amps of the pulse or the bottom is locked to 50% of whatever your amperage currently is. And there it is, the overview of the Everlast 161 STH. I know this video was quick, but I just wanted it to be really informative for anyone interested in purchasing this welder. Uh, went over all the features of it, demonstrated a few of them. Uh, I think I, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a giveaway. So because this video is brought to you by Everlast, they are letting me give this machine away. So to win that, head on over to my Instagram. I'm at JustVoss, and I'll have a giveaway post on there. All you have to do to enter is two things. Comment on that post and tag a friend, and sub to the Everlast Welders YouTube channel. There will be a link to it down in the description. So I'll pick a random winner off of Instagram, then double check that you're subscribed to them on YouTube. And that's how you win it. You'll get everything that comes in the Power Arc 161 package. So thanks again to Everlast for supporting the channel. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, you can click this one right up here. And if you haven't already, I hope you stick around and subscribe. But that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.